Hi, my name is Ryan, and I want to help you learn the engineering fundamentals intuitively. A good foundation will make it easier to succeed in engineering school or a technical career. If this sounds interesting to you, the link to my engineering fundamentals school community can be found in the description below. This video is a snippet from my school course, and I hope it helps you. What is the difference between pound mass and pound force? This is the question that we're going to clarify today. And we're going to do it with a comparison of the English system, the metric system, and the British gravitational system. When we compare these systems, there are similarities and differences. The reason between the confusion around the English system will become apparent. Firstly, let's look at the metric system. The metric system has mass units of kilograms, length units of meters, and force units of newtons. The relationship between force and mass in this system is that a newton is the amount of force necessary to accelerate one kilogram at one meter per second squared. Let's do the same for the English system of units. The mass is in pound mass, the length is in feet, and the force is in pound force. A pound force is the amount of force necessary to accelerate a pound mass at a rate of 32.2 feet per second squared. Now, if you can take nothing else away from this video, the reason that people struggle with the English system is that gravity here is included in the definition. We can see that 32.2 above, it looks different from the metric system. That difference is what we're going to weed out in this video. Let's explore the British gravitational system. Mass in slugs, the length in feet, and the force again in pound force, where a slug is defined as 32.2 pound mass. It's pretty heavy. Let's use the relationship between force and mass in the English system to find the relationship between force and mass in the British gravitational system using the definition of a slug. The relationship between force and mass in this system is that if you accelerate a slug at one feet per second squared, it takes a pound force to do so. What we're going to do is go to three different examples where we have a mass and we want to calculate a weight. We'll do it in these three systems. But first, I would like you to take note of the mathematical form of the relationship between the force and the mass. You can see in the metric system, we have the form 1 equals to 1. In the British gravitational system, we have a similar form, one equal to one. In the center system, the English system, we see one equal to 32.2. So we should suspect that something should be different here. Let's say we have someone who weighs 100 kilograms. We know gravity in the system is 9.81 meters per second squared, and we wish to find the weight. We plug in the mass and gravity, and we use our conversion to go from kilogram meter per second squared to newtons. The conversion is in the box above, and we find the weight is 981 newtons. Let's do the same thing for someone who weighs 100 pound mass. We know gravity is 32.2 here, and we wish to find the weight. We plug into the formula, but this time we see in the bracket there are numerical values other than 1. We see there's a 32.2 here, and usually people forget about the definition here. They assume they see 1 pound force, and all they're looking for is a pound mass feet per second squared to cross out and replace with the pound force. But this is a mistake. As you can see, gravity is going to cancel here after we use that definition. 
and we end up with a weight value, which is equal to 100 pound force. Note the mass to weight conversion. We ended up with no change to what's next to the mass unit going to the weight unit. 100 stayed 100. If we look at the metric system, that 100 turned into 981. This is because of that gravity in the definition and our gravity in use was exactly the same. So they ended up crossing out and there was no change from going from the mass to the weight. So whether you put pound mass or pound force, it doesn't matter. All you really need to do is put pound in this system if your gravity is 32.2 feet per second squared. Let's, uh, let's do one more example here where we explore the British gravitational system, which is like the metric system. Let's say the mass is three slugs and that gravity is 32.2 feet per second squared and we wish to find the weight. We plug into the formula, utilize the definition above, and we see that the weight turns out to be 96.6 pound force. Again, we see just as we had in the metric system, we see a transformation to the mass unit from the mass unit to the weight unit. I'd like to do one more example so that you don't leave this video thinking that it doesn't matter whether you put pound mass or pound force in all cases. Let's do an example where we're on the moon. What's special about the moon is that the gravity is not 32.2 there. The gravity is actually 5.3 feet per second squared. And that's not 32.2. So going from the mass to the weight, we will see a transformation in that number next to the unit. Let's go ahead and plug in our values here. We have our mass and our gravity on the moon. Then put our definition to convert from pound mass to pound force. What we see that the final weight value is going to be 16.46 pound force. And we see that transformation is evident going from the mass unit to the weight unit. And that's of course because gravity is not equal to 32.2 on the moon. I hope this video helped to clear up and make apparent any differences between the metric and English system and gave you some insight into the differences between a pound mass and a pound force. I hope to see you in the next video. Keep learning and keep working hard. Goodbye.